Well, it's a wonderful Wednesday. Hello, I am Mike Russell, and we are now streaming live. Nice to have you there. Come and say hello. If you're uh, joining in with the chat room, we're going to go in about 1 minute and 46 seconds from now with an OBS Studio tutorial, the best settings for it that I've found over much time, and a guide to uh, working many of the features you may need to live stream. So, slightly different topic to the one we usually cover, but still related to the world of audio streaming, live streaming, and generally creating content online. So, very excited to have you there in the chat, by the way. Uh, David Hunter is back. Nice to have you here. Finally, yes, welcome back. Good to have you here. Ashish, uh, Paige Williams as well, finishing a voice gig, popping over. Nice. Good to see you, Paige. Praise Worship, GCFX Radio, David Silkson, Robert as well. Stand by. We're going live in one minute from now. Testing the left speaker. Left. left. Testing the right speaker. Right. right. Testing phaser. 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 All frequency sweep. Stand by. Stand by for music, radio, creative, live with Mike Russell. MRC Live. Music, radio, creative, live with Mike Russell. Starting in 30 seconds. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you watching live with me as I live stream using OBS Studio. That's right, OBS Studio. A fantastic piece of software that I am going to be describing in detail during this show. Uh, so a little bit different to the usual audio production that we focus on, but still action-packed and great for you if you're a content creator. Audio production and more. This is Mike Russell on MusicRadioCreative.com MusicRadioCreative.com Really fantastic to have you uh, tuning in right now. Uh, now, I often say it uh, at the start of the show, there is a phone number you can call when I'm live streaming. So if you see, usually there's like a live bubble up here if I'm live and if it's the replay, uh, don't call. Otherwise, you get the answer phone. But I do check messages and uh, I do love to play them on the show. So if you call the number that's available, it's 415-800-1055. Uh, you can leave a message uh, just as this person in Los Angeles did. Yes. Hi, Mike. Uh, this is Alan from um, Los Angeles, uh, Animagic. Uh, productions. I just wanted to say love your show and uh, look forward to more of them. Great job. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. There you go. That's Alan in Los Angeles who just left a message yesterday, so I thought I'd give it a spin on the show. If you call when I'm not live, you get the voicemail line. You can leave a message. Or you can call now and get on with me live. 415 And remember to add plus one if you're outside the United States. Check how much it's going to cost before you make the call. MusicRadioCreative.com And uh, you, can, you can say hello that way, or you can just say hello uh, via the chat. Wherever you are watching, I can see your comments. Uh, we have a lovely uh, piece of software that runs in the background that collates comments from YouTube Live, from Facebook Live, uh, from my personal Facebook profile, uh, from Twitch, from Periscope from all over, and we're going to talk all about how we get this live stream out today using OBS Studio. So without further ado, let's get rid of this rather trendy uh, wallpaper I've got going on and head over to my desktop, uh, where you'll see uh, the YouTube channel. That's kind of uh, my main home online, uh, certainly for live streaming and uh, pre-recorded videos. Uh, now at 76,723 subscribers. Thank you to you if you are one of them. If you're not yet, then do subscribe. It's a great place to get updates 
And whenever I'm not streaming, I often put out one or two minute videos with tutorials on how to produce audio and bits like that. Uh, so simple URL, it's youtube.com slash music radio creative, youtube.com slash music radio creative. Now, the thing I think you're going to find really exciting. I don't know why I've got audition loaded in the background. Uh, we're, we're having a bit of a different day. Usually I'm into audition. Look at this lovely wallpaper I've got on my desktop today. Wonderful stuff. Uh, updates regularly via Reddit. I, I uh, subscribe to the Earth Porn subreddit uh, to get beautiful new wallpapers every day. Uh, so let me just drag down uh, my copy of OBS Studio onto the screen and you'll see that weird picture within a picture there. Hope that's not too distracting. Um, so this is what I use to live stream. It's fantastic. They're on version uh, 20.1.0 and it is available. Uh, let me actually bring the page up in case you're interested in downloading OBS Studio for yourself. Um, it's available at obsproject.com and it's completely free and open source. Now, I've used different software in the past. Um, I think there's a piece of software. It's Windows only called vMix or something, something similar to that. Uh, anyway, I've heard good things about that, although I'm not a Windows user. I have used Wirecast in the, in the past. They've been upgrading it significantly. Uh, very easy on the CPU, so I hear. But as you can see, um, you will notice that um, the CPU usage is listed here. And currently I'm streaming in 30 frames per second. It's only costing me just under 10% of my CPU. We'll get into some of the settings here very soon. But I want to show you the website where you can download it for free. Uh, it's obsproject.com download it, and away you go. It's available for Windows, available for Mac, and Linux as well. Loads of cool features, uh, as you'll see listed on the website. It lets you go out to different um, streaming areas as well. Now, one of the questions I get asked very often about live streaming online is uh, OBS Studio only gives me one place to type in a URL. Let me show you that now. Uh, so I'm going to go to the settings bit here, which is here in your menu bar. And if I click settings now, you will see you get settings. I may as well walk you through. Um, we'll get onto each tab individually and I'll show you kind of how I've got it set up and how the settings work for me. Uh, and I'll show you some of the, the scenes and everything I've got here. So we can just kind of walk through it. This is kind of let's go right from the start to the end in this video. So you might want to replay parts of this video if you miss anything or just take frantic notes, whatever. Uh, now, the first thing I do, obviously, is in general, uh, select the language is default English. But the theme, I will switch to dark. Uh, there is a default theme, looks like this, but I, I just don't like that look. It's it's too uh, heavy on the eyes, too light. So I always go for the dark theme. And since I think about a, a, a version or two ago, they released this ranchy theme as well, although it's it's very pink and turquoise. So I kind of, I stuck with the dark theme, uh, although it looks kind of more modern. But anyway, that's the theme I work with. Um, now, another thing that I tick um, when I first set up OBS Studio, and I recommend you do too if you're live streaming, is this one. Automatically record when streaming. By default, that is not ticked. I always tick that um, because, as you'll see, if I move the settings out of the way, there are two buttons here. Uh, it currently says stop streaming or stop recording because I am currently live streaming. Um, but the best thing is when I have that ticked, if I click start streaming to start my live stream, it will automatically start a recording to my hard disk of the live stream too. This is fantastic because I always put a copy of my show out as a podcast immediately after the show ends. Uh, so what I'll do is I will uh, stop recording. I'll show you the various formats you can record in, but it can record in multiple different video formats. You can save them to your hard disk and providing you pick one that works with Adobe Audition or whatever you're using, maybe Audacity. Uh, you can just drag that video file in, strip out the audio, top and tail it. I just top and tail it with an intro and an outro, uh, and then I whack it onto my um, my podcast host really, really quickly. Same description as uh, as I put for the live show in the YouTube description and everything, and it works like a charm. And it's a great way to get this out because I know a lot of people haven't got the time to watch every single live stream I do. I really appreciate it when you do tune in uh, every day, and there are a lot of uh, regulars that I'm very grateful for that do that. Um, but I know we all have busy lives and sometimes we can't get everything. So I do put a podcast out at mrc.fm slash podcast and just automatically recording helps me because as soon as I finish, the video is there on my hard disk uh, ready to strip audio from. Um, and actually, I could probably untick this. Keep recording when stream stops. I should probably uh, untick that. That would be quite handy for me because then when I stop streaming, uh, the recording will stop as well. Perfect for me. Uh, right, okay. Uh, nothing else really to worry about here. Uh, re I, I don't really change any of these settings. So that's kind of how I've got general set up. 
Then we get into the stream section of OBS Studio. And as you'll see, it's greyed out at the moment. Um, simply because uh, I I use this to stream live um, and I can't change the URL that I use. But as you can see, you can put in your URL, uh, your stream key, which of course is a secret. It's blocked out there. And you can say what kind of streaming server you're using. So usually you can just choose one location. Like you can say, I want to stream to YouTube or I want to stream to Facebook Live or to Twitch only. And it's got some great integrations to go to only one place. But what I have is a custom RTMP server which I'll explain to you in a minute, and I stream up there. So let's click OK, and let's talk about a custom RTMP server. Just going to move this uh, off the screen for the moment and go back to my, my full screen. There we go. That's my full screen, as you can see. Um, so an RTMP server is a real-time messaging protocol server, and you can set it up. There's actually a tutorial, I believe, on the OBS Studio uh, forum that allows you to set up your own RTMP server. So I have that set up, and it streams out to multiple places like YouTube, uh, Facebook Live, uh, and everywhere else. Let me see if I can find um, a URL for you. Custom RTMP server... Uh, I think if you type custom RTMP server into Google, it is actually the first result that pops up. But for those of you watching in the YouTube live chat, I'm just going to stick it in there uh, so you can bookmark it and come back to that. It's very, very handy. Uh, it does require a bit of technical knowledge and setting up Linux servers and stuff like that. Uh, but if you've got uh, cloud hosting uh, with some of the really cool uh, hosts like Linode or DigitalOcean, you can get your own RTMP server going. It allows you to stream out to multiple places. If you don't want to bother with all of that, there is another alternative that I highly recommend and I use myself uh, to stream to other places. Let me show you on the screen here. Um, you'll see uh, that we've got here running right now uh, Restream. It's a service called Restream. If you want to access this, you can go to mrc.fm slash restream. That's mrc.fm slash restream. And I'm just going to put that in the... Uh, in the live chat right now. What is good about Restream is that it look at all the places it will allow you to go live to. Uh, Mixer, which is one of Microsoft's uh, uh, platforms for live streaming. We've got Smashcast, VK, Ustream, lots of recognizable places, some not so recognizable. And as you'll see, most of them are streaming out now uh, live. And you can change the titles uh, on the uh, those platforms that support it. So I've, as you can see here, updated the title to OBS Studio Tutorial. Uh, you've got social alerts as well, all kinds of cool stuff. And for the main part, Restream is free. So go and sign up now at mrc.fm slash restream uh, and use it for yourself. Um, it does support things like YouTube and Facebook, uh, but I stream to that from my custom RTMP server. That's how I'm doing it at the moment. So, uh, yeah, really good way to get out live. And amazing uh, super chat just there. I can see it just above my head. Thank you, Scott Davis. Amazing donation to the show. Really helps to keep the show going, by the way. Scott Davis has donated uh, to the show via the super chat feature on the wonderful, wonderful YouTube. I am so very grateful. In fact, especially for you, I'm going to play you uh, a quick jingle now. MusicRadioCreative.com Thank you, Scott Davis. Amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, so that's another thing. When I'm streaming live on YouTube, uh, let me bring this down, actually. This might be interesting for you to see. I have my own kind of hacked together um, home hosted uh, chat box here. As you can see, I am currently watching in this um, little mashup I've set three chats at the same time. Uh, that's the Twitch chat over there. I can see the live chat from YouTube, and I've also got something running as well that pulls me in uh, some of the comments from our uh, Facebook Music Radio Creative page. Uh, and I can see Patrick is actually asking, can we stream to YouTube and Facebook at the same time on OBS? Not directly, as I've been saying, on OBS Studio. Not possible. Um, but you can uh, do it using your own custom RTMP server, or I believe uh, Restream will allow you to do it. mrc.fm slash Restream sign up there. So yeah, I have all the chat windows in front of me, and I also use this fantastic uh, tool uh, that a uh, developer from the Music Radio Creative community, Ule, has uh, created here. Uh, this is fantastic. Allows me to feature questions uh, on the air. So I'm using this when I click generate lower third. Let's click it on Anthony Hall's comment, and I'll just drag that back. I've got a dual screen just above my head. If I go to Q&A now, if I click Q&A scene, you'll see Q&A pops up, and uh, let's get the questions and answers lo loaded, and hopefully, uh, let's see. 
Let's feature another one. Sometimes it doesn't work with all the comments. There we go. Uh, Philip says, on the air right now, which is fantastic. Um, <laughs> and we've got bring on the broadcast from Paul Orr there. So uh, that's what I'm using. Uh, a lovely little uh, thing in the background that kind of collates all your comments together. Uh, Isabella Russell is in as well. Fantastic stuff. Kitchen Newbie watching this show. Uh, Mr. Mega Radio UK saying good afternoon to Isabella. We've got David Silkin. We've got David Hunter as well. And... Uh, Yes, David is, is wondering what I've done to my hair or what I've not done to my hair today. I know it's, I'm having a flat hair day today, aren't I? <laughs> well, I've got to mix it up sometimes, haven't I? Uh, yes, I haven't kind of spiked it. It hasn't got the usual Mike Russell uh, spiky style to it. That's because I, I went out for a long trek this morning on the Isle of Wight. Um, and uh, yes, Rather, rather heavy trekking, <laughs> so I <laughs> kind of had a quick shower when I got in, and uh, it's gone all flat. <laughs> it's gone all flat, hasn't it? Uh, crazy. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, oh, Dillinger Andrews is saying NCH is good to use. Now, I've never heard of NCH. What exactly is NCH software? Is it software? Oh, okay. Software excellence for Windows and Mac video audio graphics. Not something I'm familiar with, but uh, thanks for suggesting. And, uh, oh, wow. Can't feature your question. Uh, the, the app doesn't always allow me to do this. But, wow, I see Nick Subeling is watching. Hey, Nick. Hey, Subes. Nice to see you. Um, I've got a question. How do I get OBS to capture the video and audio from a Google Hangout? Oh, how do I get it to capture the video and audio from a Google Hangout? That's a really good question. Um, so I would imagine if, uh, let's go back to my screen share here, if you have it set up to um, record uh, your screen, first of all, you're going to get the video there uh, for certain. But then audio is another thing. And I guess we could take a little look at the audio right now. Um, so audio will pop up or your ability to edit audio is here. As you can see, at the moment, it's got mic slash aux uh, that I'm using. If I click the cog there, and we've got different different options here, filters, properties, and advanced audio properties. So let's go to, um, first of all, we'll go to properties and have a look at that. Now you'll see it's got a device listed here. Now I have live stream audio uh, currently selected, but you'll see also real sound devices that are attached to my Maca here. So obviously I can use the built-in microphone to live stream. Wouldn't sound very good, but I could. Uh, Scarlett 2i2, which is an audio interface I've got. Uh, my mixing desk, the Soundcraft mixing desk. Uh, also the audio from my webcam. And these two, uh, mix minus and live stream audio, I have set up uh, via something called Loopback from Rogue Amoeba. So so Nick, you may well want to set up Loopback um, if you're on a Mac. Let me just show you how Loopback works very quickly. Loopback is a piece of software. I think it's about $99 if you if you buy it from Rogue, Rogue Amoeba. I think you can access it, by the way, via mrc.fm slash loopback. Um, this really is a cool piece of software. I know they recently had a sale on, and I would kind of say hold your breath now until Black Friday, uh, because Black Friday is, what, just under two weeks away, and they'll probably do something for Black Friday. I bought it at the full price, $99, but I do think it's worth it. Uh, so loopback is fantastic in that you can take any input or output from any audio interface inside your Mac, and you can route it through to a new virtual uh, audio device, uh, which is amazing. So I have taken channels 13 and 14 from my mixing desk, which is kind of the output of the whole mixing desk, and I've created it as live stream audio. So anything I put through this desk goes out post EQ, post effects to you on the live stream. Um, I can't do that if I pull the desk um, channels manually because it kind of omits the EQ and stuff, which is the stuff I really want. So I use that. And also I've got one set up here called Mix Minus Audio. And that is taking, at the moment, it's taking just uh, channel three, channel three on my mixing desk, left and right. So a mono, mono uh, device there. And what that will do is when I've got a guest or someone calling into the show, it will only output uh, the audio from my microphone uh, as opposed to anything else or feedback the audio that's coming from the person calling in. Uh, so mix minus is something I feed out. Oh, and by the way, actually, I did have an email from a viewer earlier today about mix minuses, how I set it up. And uh, more particularly, is it possible to set up a mix minus 
on your mixing desk. Uh, Mix Minus, by the way, for those of you that don't know are listening and saying, what's that? Uh, it's a way to send all the audio you want to somebody who calls in, i.e. a guest or someone you've got on Skype, uh, without sending audio you don't want to. Uh, and usually you'll have like AUX1 or AUX2 on your mixing desk uh, that allow you to choose um, what you send out by, you can turn up the knobs individually on the faders you want to go out to your guest and turn them down. So for instance, I wouldn't send out the channel uh, that the guest's audio is coming in on because they'd get a kind of feedback of their own and it would really confuse them. But I will send out my microphone and maybe a jingle or something like that. Um, and the person emailing wanted to know a bit more about how to get that all working. Um, and uh, a friend of mine, Ray Ortega, has created a fantastic video here, which again, I will pop into the live chat Really need some show notes on this, don't I, today? <laughs> like I say, this might be um, one of those tutorials, and I will get to your questions as well, so please do ask questions if you're in the live chat, and I'll do my best to answer as many as I can during the live show about live streaming using OBS Studio. Um, but yeah, this may be one that you want to uh, review multiple times, again, just to get the info you want or you're interested in. So uh, Ray, uh, who's a fantastic guy from the podcasting world, has set up uh, a great video. Uh, it's a few years old now, but still very relevant today, how to set up a Mix Minus. I'm going to pop that into the uh, the chat right now for anyone who's interested in that. And uh, let's just have a quick, quick play of it. Here it is. Today we're going to tackle a subject that can be somewhat confusing at first, but after you see this video, hopefully it'll make a lot more sense. Okay, so that's Ray, and uh, it's literally just 10 minutes. You can even play it at double speed, so uh, be done within five minutes, and you can know everything that there is to know about mix minusing. It's something not just podcasters need, but live streamers need, especially if you have people uh, calling in and interacting with your show in a, a vocal way. Um, right, let's get back to it right now. Uh, I'm just going to minimize this for the moment uh, so we don't uh, confuse too many things and we focus uh, just here on OBS Studio that I've got open. Let's go back into my settings. So, so far we've been through the general tab, the stream tab, uh, and now we'll get to output, audio, video, hotkeys, and advanced as well. Uh, and by the way, do please, yeah, keep those questions coming in and I'm going to get to more in just a moment. So output here. Uh, how does this work? Again, a lot of it grayed out um, because I am currently using uh, this copy of OBS Studio on my Mac to do this live stream. Uh, and that's why you can see actually down here, kilobits per second streaming out, CPU usage, other statistics, dropped frames is really good. Um, if this starts going up, you know something's going wonky. These are all stats uh, displayed at the bottom. Another really cool thing here is this green light. Uh, if it's green, it means my stream is good. But I have had times in the past where this has gone uh, sort of orangey or yellow. And that means you're kind of heading into the danger zone. And if it goes red, uh, you know that you're, you pretty much have been cut off from live streaming. That's happened to me before when... Um, Things have gone wonky with my internet connection uh, and things like that. So it's good to have an eye on this uh, to know if you're streaming. So in the settings menu, in the output area here, we've got different tabs. And I always click over uh, from, I think it's simple or beginner, to advanced mode because I feel you have more control on what's going on with your live stream. First of all, audio track, one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't worry about that. Leave it on one, especially if you're just outputting one audio device. Uh, that makes sense. Encoder is X264. That is a software encoder, meaning, and this is how your, your video is essentially encoded uh, before it, it hits the live stream and, you know, on YouTube and everywhere else. Um, I recommend pretty much leaving this at X264 unless you have a specific graphics card um, that you know uh, has a better encoder for live streaming. But then obviously, experiment with that. For me, and I can't show you this at the moment because I can't drop it down because I am live streaming, um, there are also, because I'm on a Mac, um, Apple uh, options as well. I think there's Apple hardware encoder, Apple software encoder. And while these are super efficient and super nice to the CPU, they're just not designed for live streaming. So do not <laughs> use them. Uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's really confusing. I thought I got a really sweet setting when I was using it and my CPU was down at like 2%. And I was like, wow, I'm not using any of the CPU. I'm using this Apple hardware encoder. This is fantastic. And it worked seamlessly for me the night before. And then the next day I started a live stream and I started dropping frames everywhere. <laughs> it was awful. Um, so X264 basically is the one I recommend for Enforce streaming service encoder settings is the next tick box. Now, I would say uh, leave that ticked. Doesn't really matter, especially if you're using a custom stream URL like I am. 
But it really does matter if you're using like another device. Say if you're using OBS Studio just to stream to YouTube or just to stream to Twitch or, or whatever, or one of the settings they've got in the stream tab, then this is important because what that will do is it will set up the streaming um, settings to best match the place you're streaming to. Um, so a really good, easy thing there from OBS Studio. Rescale output, you can do that if you want, but I don't advise it. Uh, just leave it as it is. I'm currently streaming at 1920 by 1080. That's a 1080p HD stream, which is absolutely fine. Uh, what else have we got here? Rate control. You'll definitely want to leave that on CBR, constant bit rate that is. Don't go for uh, <laughs> some of these, I don't even know what they are, but VBR I know is variable bit rate. And I, I think that's why the Apple hardware encoder doesn't work uh, because it is um, it does work at variable bit rate. So constant bit rate, and my setting is 4000. It's a nice happy medium uh, because for a 1080p stream, I think YouTube advises anything between 3500 um, or um, up to 6000. So I think 4000 is enough. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm streaming at around 4168, 43 at the moment. It just varies ever so slightly. If you're on a variable bit rate, though, this will go up and down depending on what you've got displayed on your screen. And uh, live streams just aren't made up for that. Another thing I would say really important for your bitrate is check um, what your um, ISP supports. Uh, and it's, it's do it doesn't matter so much about your download rate. It really does matter about your upload rate. So if I run like a, let's do a, a speed test here. Let's run a speed test, go, and we'll have a look at see uh, what my speed is here. Currently, I'm on BT. <laughs> and... Uh, Let's let this run and see what my ping and download and upload is. But basically, you've got to have more than enough upload than you're using. So, yeah, for some reason, BT have, I'm going to be calling them up again because usually I hit about 74 megabits per second. Uh, they seem to have sliced that in half recently. Don't know why. So, <laughs> BT needs another phone call from Mike Russell, I think. And then upload is, yeah, whoa, struggling to hit 10. Uh, usually I get up to about 16, uh, so that's probably logical because I'm sending out a uh, 4 uh, megabit per second stream, so I'm kind of chewing up uh, enough of that. So providing, uh, there you go, 34 down, 10 up, providing you have uh, more than enough, I would say this this should be at maximum 70% of your upload rate, uh, otherwise you're going to start running into lost frames and bits like that. So bear that in mind. Also bear in mind, if you are streaming out locally from your local computer or an RTMP server that you have set up on your own home server or wherever, if it's coming out of your pipe, out of your connection, each stream you do uses this bitrate again. So if you're streaming to YouTube and Facebook, that's no longer 4,000, that's now 8,000 that you're sending out to the internet, and you're going to need at least 8 megabits per second, probably even 10 or 11 megabits per second to be safe. And same again, if you're sending a third stream out, that then triples, so that's uh, you know 12 megabits per second. Uh, you'll need probably a nice buffer. So yeah, when I get up to sending three streams out from my local internet connection, that's more than enough uh, for, for me. But you can get round that, and this is how I do it. I have a uh, streaming server, as I've said, set up on a Linode server. It's brilliant. Uh, I stream for an hour a day, Monday to Friday, and um, on the smallest plan on Linode. Uh, let me actually bring up Linode. If you want to uh, sign up to Linode and use some of their services, just go to um, mrc.fm slash Linode, L-I-N-O-D-E, and I'm going to bring up the pricing page for you to show you uh, the standard plans they've got. Let's just bring up another window here. Uh, where are we? There we are. And yeah, I use Linode for my custom RTMP server, and I'm using the cheapest one. It's a one gigabyte RAM server, five bucks a month it costs me. Um, I get one CPU core. 20 uh, giga, it does, storage really doesn't matter, one terabyte transfer, which by the way, this is what you need to pay attention to if you're live streaming using a cloud server, because you can easily tear through gigabytes and terabytes by live streaming. And obviously it's got um, a 40 gigabits per second network in and a 1000 megabits per second network out. So with 1000, 
upload. Just imagine how li- how many live streams you can have going at the same time with just the basic plan from Linode for $5 a month. So highly recommended if you want to expand and you want to get into the geekery of this because, of course, you can sign up to a service like Restream at mrc.fm slash Restream. If you want to DIY, and there are tutorials like the one I linked to earlier out there on the internet, uh, a one gigabyte Linode server will do it for you. It'll be really cool. By the way, in three minutes, I'm going to look at some more of your, your questions that you've been sending in. But uh, can't recommend this enough. Really fantastic. Lots of fine grain control available. And you can do things like uh, re-encoding your stream is a really expensive thing to do in terms of CPU usage. And if you want to do it on Restream, I think they have a plan where you can uh, you can buy re-encoding by the hour. So it's an expensive thing to buy. Um, but if you have a Linode um, server, what I have learned over time is that one CPU core equals one re-encoded stream, which for me is enough because most places I stream to, except the 1080p, uh, 4,000 kilobit per second stream that I send out, but... Uh, Periscope is a bit different, and they're a bit funny about what they accept. I think uh, they need a 540p stream, uh, so tiny, tiny stream. Uh, they need it to be mono and all these other things, and you need to re-encode. Well, one CPU core will allow you to re-encode one stream, so I can do that on my, my Linode server, uh, inclusive of that $5 a month. Um, I've tried to re-encode two streams, and it just crashes, doesn't work. Uh, so then I'd need to, if I wanted to re-encode two streams for whatever reason, I'd need to go up to two CPU cores, up to the $20 a month plan, obviously get more transfer. If you re- if you stream live uh, for more than one hour, by the way, uh, a day uh, in an average month, uh, then you may need to well upgrade your server as well to allow more transfer as well. So just bear that in mind. Uh, but mrc.fm slash Linode, if you'd like to sign up to Linode uh, to host your own RTMP server. And many of these links I'm mentioning, by the way, in this live stream are um, affiliate links, which means it helps the show if you sign up using those links. So uh, if you do, uh, I'm grateful to you and I really appreciate that. Um, so I'll get to some of your questions. I'll just complete the output tab of OBS Studio so you can see what I've got here. No need for a custom buffer size. Keyframe interval is super, 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 super important. Uh, what is a keyframe interval? Well, basically, it, um, it's the amount of time in seconds that um, you're kind of updating uh, wherever you're streaming to YouTube or Twitch and saying, hey, there's something new, check it. Hey, there's something new, check it. Hey, there's something new, check it. And um, generally, YouTube, Twitch, other places like a keyframe interval of uh, two seconds. Uh, So two seconds, two, the number two is important. And that's what I put there in the advanced output mode. Uh, Then CPU usage, very fast I've got. Ultra fast is the the lowest quality, but you kind of go a bit grainy at times. So I opt for very fast the the lower you go here the more cpu you're using so you can go for medium placebo but then it's going to start racking up the cpu usage and if you've got a fan that might kick in so uh very fast i find is enough for basic tutorials like the ones i do if you're talking about gaming and streaming live games you might well want to go a bit higher but then you'll need uh bigger cpus um profile main uh this is the um the profile that you you stream at there are there are different ones here like baseline main and high and now it's been a while since i've had a play with this but essentially it's something to do with the way you encode your h.264 uh, video for live streaming uh, baseline uh, is the lowest quality and it's kind of a bit grainy main is supported by most of the live streaming platforms like youtube uh, twitch facebook live and high is not supported by some of the platforms. So if you get a high, yeah, it might give you a slightly better quality stream, but it might not work with every live streaming area. Tune, I would leave that to none. um, But if you're working with like, as you can see here, there are presets for animation, film, zero latency. You can have a mess, but uh, none is the one that I found after experimenting works the best for me in terms of CPU usage and quality. And you can add extra options here. Um, I've had a play with this, but I found found that nothing that I've added in this space has actually improved or enhanced my live streaming experience. So I leave it blank. So we'll get on to the rest of the tabs and some more tips and tricks inside OBS Studio. But now I would like to go back and answer some questions. And I can do this either by hitting uh, the different scenes I've got set up over here in the left. Uh, so as you can see, I've got my intro scene here, my Q&A scene, my lower third scene. If I click lower third here, boom. Ah, hello. Yes, there's my lower third. Uh, and that's actually... Um, 
in as a little video, as you can see, brings up my name. It's rather wonderful. Let's see whether we can bring up some more of your questions then uh, that you are asking. What have we got here? Um, very kind of you, David, to say, my hair makes me look like a young lad today. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's super nice. Uh, right. What have we got here? Um, we've got Beanie Draws. Hello, Beanie Draws. Let's put you on the screen. Uh, although sometimes I can't put your questions up on the screen. But anyway, OBS Studio lets you record multiple audio channels as multiple different audio files, uh, which is true. That's the different audio channels. We'll get onto that in just a moment, actually. Um, really, really good fun stuff. Uh, Scott Davis, hello to you. And thank you for the super chat earlier, by the way, as well. Uh, amazing stuff. Um, what else have we got? Anthony says, I use Restream and it works great. Yeah, it really is absolutely fantastic. If you restream to YouTube and Facebook simultaneously, they do charge you 29 bucks a month. Yeah, I think you need like a like a custom RTMP server or something, don't you? Last time I looked at it, I, I do use the, the free plan of um, Restream uh, as I do, like I say, I do all of that custom myself on a Linode server. For me, um, just figuring out the basics, there is a tutorial online on how to do it. $5 a month, it saves me that $29 a month. Um, plus it... it it's, uh, yeah, you can stream to so many more places. You can re-encode again. That's another saving. Uh, so if you fancy DIY, you're going to save yourself a lot of money, particularly if you're doing this month on month. Uh, Nick says, there you go. Nick managed to feature you. Yay. I use uh, Joycaster to send to Facebook and YouTube. That is $22 a month. Uh, so yeah, all of these services will do it for you. And in the most case, that's, that's probably a really good idea. But if you fancy getting stuck in, you can definitely save yourself some money. Do I use OBS uh, black screen syndrome on Mac? Uh, not quite sure what you mean there, but I do I do have chroma key uh, going on and I can show you how that works because I've got a green screen behind me uh, for this wonderful wallpaper. How many monitors do you have in front of you? Philip's asking. Uh, I've got one here. I've got another one above me uh, with uh, kind of live chat and streaming statuses. Uh, and then right up at the top, I've got two dashboards uh, that actually show me how many people are watching live on all the different platforms. Pull that in from different APIs and send it to my dashboard. And other statistics like subscribers, view counts, weather in my local area really is good. Um, and actually, if you search back through my channel, Philip, uh, to my studio tour, uh, you'll find a, a moment when I did actually go around the whole studio and, uh, and show you uh, some of the stuff I have got there. Uh, thank you to Mr. Mega Radio UK. Just place an order at musicradiocreative.com. Very, very grateful for that. Uh, what else have we got? How do you get your YouTube chat to appear as a transparent background? What you mean over here? This, this lovely thing that I have running, ticking. Again, that's another thing that has a tutorial. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me try and bring it up on the screen and send you a link. YouTube chat uh, OBS. Uh, there is a tutorial. Yeah. If you type YouTube chat OBS into Google, that will bring you the tutorial. But essentially, again, I'm going to post this in the live chat. I know there's so much here to go through. Maybe I can collect some of these links and post them in the notes later because a lot of different resources are well worth linking to. Um, so that's the method I use, the method I just posted in the YouTube live chat. And I do hope that that's of value and uh, useful to you, Anthony. Uh, Lollipop. Hi, Mike. Do you have a tutorial for beginners in Adobe Audition? Mm. Uh Yes, I believe I do, actually. If you go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash musicradiocreative, and let me just see. If you go into the search bar and type beginners into it, see here, beginners, you will find some of my beginners tutorials. Uh, I've done a five-part series, Adobe Audition tutorial for beginners, and that may well, Lollipop, help you to get started. Now, you may see that I'm switching between screens uh, without even touching anything on my OBS studio. This is another thing I'm really excited about that I, I've set up to use. Uh, this is my custom dashboard that has various different buttons on for my live streaming. So I can kind of click this button here, screen share, and it will take me to my screen share. Now you can see my background screen. And then if I click lower third again, Boom, like that, and I'm back to lower third. So very handy to have a little dashboard in front of me for all those features. Uh, again, that's another hacky, cody thing that I've done. Um, but if you're interested in it, 
Um, it's a part of a home automation project called Home Assistant, and the actual project itself is called Wall Panel uh, Project for Android. Wall Panel Project for Android. Again, I'll post this link up there in case you guys are interested uh, in getting involved in it. So much to look into, <laughs> but it's all good fun. Uh, what else have we got in the Q&A? Yay, Joe is here. Moderator Joe is in. Nice to have you here, Joe. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Nick says, I uh, can't feature that question, but it says, I'm on a Mac, so yeah, I'll have to check out Loopback. Looking to switch to OBS, Wirecast CPU usage on the Mac is nearly 100%. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I think oh, you're going to love OBS Studio, Nick. I really find it fantastic. And Juan, wow, my friend Juan has just donated 100 Mexican dollars to the show uh, through the Super Chat feature on YouTube. Juan, super, super grateful for you. Thanks so much. Really helps to keep the show going. Very, very grateful indeed. Wow. Amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, nice to see Tim Redman as well, who's in, which is uh, is good there in the chat. Mr. Mega Radio UK says, uh, I know that OBS Studio Video and Audio, but is it similar to an audio transponder for radio broadcasting? Uh, do you mean like the kind of processing? I can show you some of that in just a moment, actually, some of the audio effects. Uh, you can put some really funky audio effects on OBS Studio. Uh, oh, yes, Yannick has uh, given me a wonderful guide, AB average bit rate. Interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, Libase from Italy, nice to have you there. David is suggesting I should get a leased line. will fix speed issues but can be costly. Yes, I hope BT hurry up and roll out more stuff. I think actually I was looking into something. You can pay something like uh, most parts of the UK. I know it's available in the Isle of Wight or on the Isle of Wight now where I am. You can pay something like £3,000 and they will build fibre to the premises uh, for you personally uh, from your nearest cabinet or node into your house. So £3,000. But then I think it's about £150 or something a month uh, for speeds of 300 down and 30 up. So n not that much more up than I'm currently getting. So, you know, it's kind of, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens next. I'm sure they're going to do more uh, stuff with the internet. I would really like it. Uh, it's got to be the way it's going. Think about getting 4G. Uh, it can supposedly get 30 megabits per second upload. Yeah, I do have a 4G antenna, but again, more costly, although probably not as costly as a, um, a leased line or a fiber to the premises. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff there. Good discussion here on internet. Uh, one comment here saying I'm on Plusnet, supposed to get five megabits per second average, but only get two down. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's not good, is it? Um, wondering if 100 gigabytes enough. Uh, Beanie Draws is asking again uh, for weekly uploads and live streams. Possibly, just about. What is 100 gigs? Is that a terabyte? Uh, might well be just about enough. Um, right. Any other questions before I hop back in? There's a lot of questions I can see here. Um, I've got a cinematic LUT pack for OBS over at my channel, if you want to check it out, uh, for the cinematic and film look. Ah, yes, yeah, someone was actually asking about LUT for OBS, so video mark. That'd be really handy if you can kind of let us know how to access your channel. You might not be able to post a link, but if you can tell us a bit more video mark, that might be interesting to myself and others as well. Uh, to change scenes in OBS, do you use Elegato Stream Deck? Yeah, I've heard about that, um, but I kind of did my own dashboard on an Android tablet, and that kind of works for me. Um, again, thank you, Juan, for the fantastic contribution to this show. Uh, and finally, for the moment, before I get back into some more OBS uh, tutorial here, uh, we've got David Hunter saying, I don't think you actually told us the outcome of getting 4G uh, when you were looking at it before. Uh, perhaps a showcase at some point. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be nice to go into detail on that. Um, I do now have a 4G uh, failover modem. I think that's what it's called. And I have my Mac plugged into that. So uh, I have the Mac that I stream from plugged into the 4G failover modem uh, that then goes uh, straight through to the router. So essentially, it's kind of monitoring what's going on. And if there's a wired internet connection coming in, it lets me go out through that. But if the wired connection goes down, then the 4G takes over. And at the moment, I was using, um, I know this is UK-centric, uh, talking about UK mobile networks, um, but I was using um, EE, 
Everything Everywhere uh, used to be Orange and T-Mobile uh, as the backup uh, there. And that's actually the network I'm with with my mobile. Um, but I decided I got a three SIM card from three mobile at three.co.uk. And um, I don't know if they've still got the offer on, but when I got it, they give you 200 megabytes a month free for life. I know. I don't know how they do that. Uh, but anyway, that SIM card allows me 200 megabytes free um, uh, per month for life, which is brilliant for my usage. So I have it in there as a failover. And then if for whatever reason something goes down, uh, that should kick in. Uh, but obviously, if I'm live streaming, I'll, th I'll chew through 200 megabytes in about a minute or two. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, you get an extra couple of minutes from me uh, and then the stream will die. Or um, hopefully I can I can quickly get out my credit card and top up uh, before, <laughs> before it all runs out. Uh, right, we'll get back to some more questions in just a minute. Back to screen share and settings here. Uh, so we've gone through uh, general stream and output. Let's look at audio. Again, sample rate 44.1 is good for audio, stereo channels. Uh, nothing else going out, but the mic auxiliary audio device is live stream audio, and this goes out to my live stream, so I have that selected. Uh, I don't use any of this push to talk or push to mute. Um, I, I just I have a mixing desk so I can fade myself in and out. I can fade myself down like that, make myself quieter, make myself louder using the mixing desk, so uh, no software solutions required there. Uh, video here, uh, very important. Uh, video output is currently active. Uh, so obviously I can't change anything. But again, I leave it at 1080p, 1080p. Downscale filter would be by cubic, which is fine. And FPS value would be 30 frames per second, uh, which works really well. Um, there is another place, I think, where you can see. Oh, I haven't gone through the other tabs here. Recording is important. Uh, again, I'm recording to my movies folder on my Mac uh, when I live stream. And you can change the format. MOV is the one I've gone for, which is... Uh, Apple format, so it's perfect for me. MP4 you can use, uh, although MP4 is a little bit in un, not very stable, unstable. That's what I wanted to say. Um, so yeah, if you use MP4, just be aware uh, that if your computer for whatever reason crashes or the stream crashes, you will lose the whole stream. That's why I go for MOV, because uh, if it crashes, you kind of get everything up into the point of crash, which can be good uh, for uploading what I've done so far. They also support things like S FLV um, and other uh, recording formats, but MOV I found to be great. And the best thing about MOV is when I finish the stream and stop streaming, I can literally drag and drop the MOV file into Adobe Audition for creating the podcast. I'm recording audio track one using the streaming encoder and uh, rescaling output to 1080p again. Audio over here, only use track one, and the bitrate is 128 kbps. No real point at the moment in doing anything higher, as that's the highest that uh, YouTube and Facebook use. I certainly know that for certain. So 128 is there. Replay buffer, don't use at all. Uh, so that's absolutely fine. So we've done output, we've done audio now. Uh, video we've covered. Hotkeys, I'm a big, big hotkey person. And I've got all these hotkeys set up. Uh, switch to the be right back scene is... Um, I think that's option and five. Uh, starting intros, I've got option one, option two, option six. All of these different hotkeys assigned for various different scene changes. And that's how I'm using the tablet that I demonstrated to you earlier. A wonderful tablet. I can just um, click it and then it essentially mimics that hotkey on my Mac for me and makes that scene transition happen. So a bit of hacking together required there, but super handy. And if you don't want a tablet, uh, you can just use your keyboard uh, to switch between the scenes if you set up the right hotkeys and you know what they are. Only issue with that is you need to have OBS Studio selected as your active window, okay? So if you don't have it selected as your active window, uh, then uh, you'll find that the hotkeys just simply won't work. Or actually, I, th I think I had the experience where they do work, and that can be quite confusing because I think I had spacebar as a hotkey assigned once, and uh, that wasn't really very friendly because when I was hitting spacebar to play in Adobe Audition, it was changing scenes. All right, time for me to get my voice back. Uh, let's play a jingle. I've done a lot of talking in this show. At least that's what it feels like. Feel free, you can talk in the last 15 minutes by give me a phone call. Phone that is my number. It's a US number, so just add plus one if you're outside the United States. Love to hear from you today. Music radio creative. 
Cause the audio guru is here He knows Adobe Audition in and out And is here to help you out Mike Russell Oh nice, yes, we're we're having a bit of a break from Adobe Audition today Don't worry though, don't fret, don't fear We'll be back into Audition tomorrow uh, But I thought I'd play that jingle anyway uh, what else have we got here? You had better dance right now, Mike Russell, Mike Russell. Fantastic, I will dance. Uh, one more jingle quickly. MusicRadioCreative.com And uh, we'll fire back into it. Uh, in fact, no, now would be a good time to um, mention a few more uh, wonderful questions. You have been asking a lot of questions, so I get the impression that this uh, topic is very valuable to you, and I may well be covering it again in a future stream as this show has gone down so well. What upload speed do you need to stream in HD? Uh, I think I'm going to say a minimum... Uh, depends what you want to do. HD can be 720p, so you're going to need at least three or four megabits per second, I would say, uh, to do a reasonable HD stream. Uh, probably at least 10 megabits per second if you want to do uh, 1080p and, and 4K. You're going to need sort of 20 or 30 up for that. Um, what's this? David replying to Tim, you need to pay MRC $5 million every month and you can have it. Uh, I didn't see what the question was, but anyway, funny answer there from David. Uh, Joe says uh, it's called a failover network. Yeah, the uh, thing I was referring to earlier uh, with my uh, my 4G backup that I have. Um, Yannick, do you set a QoS for your stream? Actually not quite sure what that is, so maybe someone can enlighten me. Uh, unfortunately, Daniel, no fibre optic uh, has reached our premises here on the Isle of Wight in the UK yet. Although some parts of the UK are very uh, lucky to have uh, Virgin Media. And actually there is a company here on the island called White Fibre, uh, but it doesn't stretch to the part of the island that we're on. <laughs> we're we're out in the sticks here. We're lucky to have BT uh, with their copper cables, uh, but that's about as good as it gets presently for us. I'm sure that will improve in the future. Uh, QoS equals quality of service. Do I have a quality of service? No. Uh, still not quite sure uh, what that means. So maybe someone can help me out with that. There are a couple of smaller ISPs in the UK that provide the same upload as download, although one is only available in tower blocks or office blocks. Yeah, I, I know. I, I wish. But I think the Isle of Wight is... Uh, is fairly limited, although there was a wonderful announcement uh, recently um, there was an Isle of Wight uh, entrepreneurial business conference that happened about a week ago, and uh, White Fiber actually announced their plans to make this island the first gigabit island in the United Kingdom. Uh, so uh, I hold out uh, high hopes. I have my fingers crossed. I would love, love, love to have gigabit. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. But at the moment, I mean, everything works general uh, in general. 99% of the time. So I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, what else have we got here before I get back into it? Um, I am enjoying the telephone jingle a bit too much. You're absolutely right. Uh, Goodstuff.fm. Thank you for that. Um, what else have we got? Um, show me how to use OBS. Yes, that is the idea of the show. So let's get back to it. Um, let's have a look. Uh, yes, there's some comments about quality of service. I'm sure it's something I should know. I probably do know, and I've forgotten. And I'm going to end the stream and think, oh, yes, of course. Um, can someone please spell it out to me in the live chat? Quality of service, because I'm having a mind blank on that. Anyway, let's go back to uh, screen share. Do uh, keep questions coming in. I might be able to answer one or two more before the end of the stream. I want to make sure I'm kind of answering everything that you want to know. Back in the settings, though, there's just advanced here, and most of this I leave as is. Uh, there's no need to do anything um, really here unless you've got uh, major issues or you really want to change something. But um, something else that's worth noting is that I've got all these scenes set up here, which have like my screen share here, and I've got Streamlabs that I use to overlay when someone makes a donation. Chat, which is that uh, YouTube live chat you can see going on in the background over over here behind my mouse or in front of my mouse. Um, I've got the C920 camera. That's a Logitech C920 I use and my iMac screen in the background. Another thing that's quite cool here, if I go to, um, I've been to properties already, uh, so I use the live stream audio uh, from Rogue Amoeba's loopback. But if you go to advanced audio properties, you see here, uh, Mike Orks is my live stream audio output that's going to you. 
Volume is 100%. I can down mix to mono, but obviously I want you to hear things in stereo. I have my sync offset at 160 milliseconds. For some reason, I need that amount of delay. Otherwise, my mouth doesn't match up with uh, what I'm saying. And then we've got um, the tracks that I'm sending out, etc. cetera. Uh, but something, as this is uh, an audio show in general, uh, I can go in and show you uh, filters, which is really cool. At the moment, I have no audio filters, but you can add some pretty funky audio filters uh, to your live stream. So it will allow you to um, enhance your audio. Uh, you've got lots of stuff here, like you've got a compressor, you've got gain, noise gate, noise suppression. Uh, these would all set up um, pretty much the same as um, I would show you in Adobe Audition. But let's show you the compressor for a moment here. And you can see the ratio is uh, 10 to 1. Uh, and actually, this might well have kicked in. So if that has kicked in, it might have uh, reduced my audio a little bit. But again, you can see ratio, threshold, attack, release, output, gain. So if you've watched me playing around with a compressor before inside Adobe Audition, uh, this should not be anything new to you. Uh, I'll remove that compressor now. Yes, I do wish to remove it, and uh, that's gone. But yeah, you've also got things like gain to increase the gain. That's self-explanatory. Noise gate will mute out any audio when you stop talking. Can be quite handy at times. And noise suppression, kind of like a noise reduction thing. Also, VST, VST2.x plugins. So this is cool. You can actually use VST plugins uh, with OBS Studio. And, uh, oh, yeah, I've got my wave shell here. Let's see if it's going to let me do anything here but I, I doubt it. No, um, I have had a play with this before and I have downloaded um, before a couple of free VST plugins. In fact, I'm sure if you go to a previous OBS Studio tutorial I've done, you'll see me playing about with this. So anything that's essentially VST as an audio plugin, you can run on your live stream of OBS. So if you want to run some cool EQ or, or reverb or anything else or kind of filters or roll off bass, you can kind of do all that natively inside OBS which is fantastic. And you access that by dropping down the cog by your audio settings and advanced, no, sorry, not advanced audio properties, filters is where you'll find it. Um, I've got here a fade. You can have a fade or a cut. This is just the transition between scenes. So you'll notice when I go between scenes like this, you see it fades like that. I've got a 400 millisecond fade set up, which is nice. Again, go back to my screen share and boom, uh, fades into the screen. I quite like fade. Cut is a bit too jumpy for me. Uh, another thing you can do is go into studio mode. Those of you who have used Wirecast before may find studio mode uh, quite homely. As you can see there, it kind of gives you a, a preview of what you're going to put out on the screen. So if I go to, um, for instance, um, let's say lower third here, it puts the lower third up in preview uh, over here, and then I can tra click transition, boom, and then lower third then goes live onto your screen onto the live stream now and my, my lower third is showing just over there uh, and then I'll go back to my screen share transition button and boom we're back into the screen share coolest thing about lower third is I've got like a, as you'll see here an MOV file which I generated in After Effects for my lower third if you want to create great After Effects uh, um, lower thirds you can get them from places like videohive.net um, but also now, try out the new MOGRT uh, file format, uh, which is available inside the Essential Graphics panel of Adobe Premiere Pro. Essentially, a much easier way to create lower thirds uh, using Adobe Premiere Pro and not deep diving into After Effects. So something to bear in mind there. Um, and that's pretty much it uh, for all of the settings here. You see, th these are the things I'm displaying on the screen. These are the scenes. Each scene has its own various set here. You can obviously uh, click an eye to switch something off. So if I click this eye, boom, uh, the chat will go. Although let's switch back to uh, uh, this is the mode I like to work in. If I switch off the chat, boom, the chat's gone. Boom, it's back on again. So you can do that using the eye icon here. If I click lock here, that kind of locks that in place so that now I cannot move that chat around on my window, uh, which is quite nice. If you've got something where you want it to be, you can padlock it in place and prevent it being moved around when you're trying to move other, other things around. Because this screen is one big thing. So I can just like, I can move this, see? And that's moving my screen around uh, inside the stream. So everything is kind of drag and drop inside OBS. Uh, which is very, very nice indeed. Right, I'm going to get back to the Q&A now and just see if there's anything else I can answer before I uh, disappear. Um, oh, right, I'm with you now. Uh, Daniel is saying QoS 
uh, set up in the uh, router at the router level. Yes, quality of service. Uh, sorry, I was thinking about something inside OBS Studio. That's why I was like, quality of service. Um, so, yeah, obviously, yes, prioritizing uh, the traffic of my live stream over something else, like, for instance, uh, someone downloading a large audio file or somebody trying to watch Netflix while I'm streaming. Yeah, I to totally a good idea. Something that I just have not had the time to set up properly, um, but I think would be beneficial, although... Uh, in all reality, uh, the internet connection is not used that much uh, while I'm live streaming anyway, uh, so I don't see it as a major problem. But certainly if you live streaming as your business and you're doing it all the time, QoS setup on the router uh, would be a, a really, really good idea. So uh, thank you uh, to Daniel, also uh, David, who uh, helped me out with the uh, my QoS mind blank. David Lewis, um, when I export the final bounce file in a multitrack to MP3, Default always seems to make it come out at 192 kbps, whereas I want it at 320. Any ideas? Um, usually in Adobe Audition, which I think I have got open. Uh, yes, let's just go OBS screen share here. Um, if I start a new file, oh, new audio file, and save that here. If I select MP3, I usually get the option here, format settings, to change the bitrate from 128 or 192 to 320. Click OK, and then it's going to save as a 320kbps mp3. Uh, so there you go. I hope that's going to help you, uh, David, with your question. Let's see if we can squeeze in a few more before we go. Um, oh, yes, uh, Praise Worship, did I cover color grading in OBS? I didn't, uh, but there was someone in the chat talking about it. Not something I'm very familiar with, actually, um, but... Um, it would be something worth covering maybe in a future tutorial. So thank you for that idea. Uh, do I have an archive list with the shows I've done? Uh, asks Bob. Uh, well, Bob, the best way to do that is uh, head over to uh, youtube.com slash music radio creative. That's youtube.com slash music radio creative. And uh, you can go search through every live stream and every recorded video I've ever done. Music radio Good one from Yannick. Can the studio mode uh, be a preview on another screen? Uh, not in my experience. I haven't set that up. It doesn't mean it's not possible, uh, but certainly not something I have uh, tested. Uh, and uh, finally, for now, the last one I think I'm going to be able to fit in. Uh, Quantum BW says, great show today. Thanks for sharing amazing knowledge. I'm a modest customer who buys on-air jingles for my FM station. Amazed how much you share of the secret sauce. Well, Quantum BW, what a lovely way to end the show today. It is absolutely my pleasure. I hope uh, that not only you, but others have found the show handy. Uh, do remember to rewind back to your favorite parts. Uh, and if enough of you want some of the links I've mentioned in the show, I'll try and get them up in the show notes for you as well. If you haven't got time to catch every show live, remember the podcast is there. You can go and subscribe and get every single show I live stream in audio form at mrc.fm slash podcast. Thanks for watching. 